Hey, what's up guys, how we doing? So over the last few months, I've probably been asked about Robinson Cano and his swing mechanics more than any other player in the game. People all over the country are fascinated by him, as am I. He's got one of the prettiest swings in the game. Uh, he hits for a high average, he drives and runs, he hits home runs. Uh, he does everything basically at the plate that you would want in a baseball player. So today, we're just going to look at a couple of things that he does that I like and that I think really help him out. Um, and hopefully we can take some of these things and you guys can apply it to your games. So basically, whenever I'm looking at a hitter or hitting myself, basically, we're trying to put our body in a better position to get the bat on path and, and get on the correct plane of the pitch. What I mean by that is, we'll see in a second, but I'll draw it really quickly. Pitcher's throwing from a mound, he's throwing overhand, so he's going to be throwing the ball slightly downhill. So the ball, as you see it coming into the picture in a few seconds, will be moving in this direction. And basically, we're trying to match that exact path going the other way. So our swing is going to basically move along this line as much as we possibly can in this direction. And the longer we can stay on that line, the better chance we have to be successful to hit the ball. It gives us a better chance to make contact and to drive the ball. Uh, so we want to get on as early as we can and we want to stay as long as we can. That's what all the great hitters do. There's a few key things that guys do, uh, a few positions that they get into, that they put their bodies into that help them get on that path. And that's kind of what we'll look at today. So uh, let's start off first with a couple of things I see. So the first thing that Cano does when he gets ready to hit, he gets back and then what he's going to do is he's going to move his body and use his momentum to move back towards the pitcher. And this is something that you'll see a lot of players do. Some do it more than others, depending on how uh, close their, their stance is. Uh, wider guys don't move as much. Guys that are more upright with a closer, their feet closer together in their stance will typically stride a little bit longer. But just about everybody's going to use some momentum and actually move themselves towards the pitcher. The important part uh, when it comes to this is, and, and where young kids get in trouble, is typically younger players will stride into the plate, so their momentum is going over the plate. And we talked earlier about getting into a good position. Well, that's one bad position that a lot of kids get into, and, and not just kids, but uh, players of all ages when they're struggling a little bit, is that they'll move and they'll move into the plate too much, so their momentum is moving in, and it's tough. Uh, what that usually does is it makes it tougher to get your bat on path. So you want your momentum moving more this way, back of the pitcher, staying square to the pitcher, making sure that you're not moving in, but instead moving this way, back at the pitcher. Now, if we circle his head real quick, this is something that you'll hear a lot of younger coaches talking about with players, is that you don't want to move your head. You want to keep your head as, as still as possible throughout the swing. Well, if you watch any big league player, He's going to have his head here, and he's going to actually move, and you can see him moving. So his head's moving just like basically 99% of players in the big league's head move. So you can think about this move like you would uh, in any other sport, whether you're uh, going to, whether you're a boxer, you're going to throw a punch, or uh, whether you're going to take a slap shot, or whether you're going to pitch a ball or throw a ball. Um, in every sport, you're going to move your body towards the target. Now, in baseball, one of the important things and what this really does for us is not only does it give us something to hit with and help us get off our backside a little bit, but it also helps us create some separation and some torque. And some when I say separation or torque, I mean basically between the bottom half and the top half. So as we're moving ourselves towards the pitcher, we need to make sure that we keep our hands back. And if you watch almost every guy in the big leagues, when they land, their front foot lands, if I draw a line from where their hands are, they're going to be basically back over their back foot. Two key things to think about. To have your hands back so you have some length in your and your lead arm so that your hands are back over your back foot, but also that they're not traveling with your stride foot. So what you'll see in a lot of younger players is as they stride, their hands are going to really creep forward, and when they land, their hands are basically moving in the same direction as their front foot and their body. You want to think as your body and as you make a move towards the pitcher and you're traveling this way, your hands are going in the opposite direction, and that's where you get the separation from. 
in my mind, this is what really separates the really good hitters from the not so good hitters and the guys that are able to create a lot of bat speed versus um, people that aren't able to is this idea of separating uh, the bottom half and the top half and really creating some tension, some stretch to create bat speed. It allows your bottom half to work and really get the swing going and then your top half and basically the bat's going to be the last thing that really comes through and whips through the zone and that's where you get the bat speed. A lot of young kids think that they need to generate everything with their top half and they don't get that separation or that tension to really whip the bat through. Instead they rely on their upper body to push the bat through and that's not going to create anywhere close to enough bat speed that it takes uh, to get to the high levels of baseball. They get to the big, to, as a professional player, get to the big leagues. And I think that's really the separating uh, thing. So let's go on to a couple other things and then we'll kind of get back into this idea of, uh, of separation and creating some tension. So the next thing that I really see is when big leaguers or when Cano lands, he lands in a really good athletic position where he's basically 50-50. He's in a good spot right here. Head's in the middle of his body as he's moved himself, and he lands. What I see in a lot of younger guys is that they don't move towards towards the pitcher, and all of their weight is basically all back here. It makes it really tough to rotate, puts them in a bad position. Usually, they get back here, their front hips open, um, and they spin. They, they do what you probably heard, squish the bug. So we're basically just spinning, um, and it causes a lot of problems in the swing. Cano, along with most big league guys, they land, they get in a good athletic position right here. So now this is kind of where the whole idea of tension comes in, where the swing's working from the ground up. And as you can see, he's already started to rotate. His head is staying stationary. So if we draw a circle around his head, once he lands, so he moved his body, head in the middle of his body. Once he lands, he's going to swing and turn and rotate around a stationary axis. So he's no longer moving forward. Now he's simply just rotating. He's unwinding. He's taking that tension that he built up. And he's basically, if you think about it as, a, as an elastic band, he's letting it go. And that's what's really creating the bat speed. The swing is working from the ground up. He's rotating so that at contact, he's now, his bottom half is fully turned. You can see his shoelaces, his knee, and his belly button are all on the pitcher and the bat. Even here, he's basically fully turned, but you can still see the bat is laid back. And all that is is the bat being the last thing to really come through. By getting that, creating that tension, getting his hands moving backwards as he's moving forward, and now he begins to rotate, it gives his bat some time to get into the hitting zone and be the last thing that really whips through the zone. So we talked a little bit earlier about how our goal in the swing is to put ourselves in a good position and kind of sequence our movements up so that we're in the hitting zone for a long, long time. And let's watch real quick and take a look at Cano's bat path and how it's working in the zone. So if we see the ball moving in right here from the screen, we'll draw a line from the ball to where the catcher is going to catch the ball so you can see the ball is moving slightly down. Now it's a little tough to see in this particular video because it gets a little bit blurry when Cano's uh, starts to swing but you can see if I go back and forth right here you can see how his bat enters the zone and if I drew a line here his bat would basically be right here entering the zone and it's going to move along that line as long as it possibly can matching the plane of the ball you can see the ball taken off right there. My guess is that's a deep home run to right center field. But you can see how his bat is in that area of impact for a really, really long time. And that's what makes him such a great hitter. If you watch instead younger players, a lot of players swing down too much. They're too steep into the zone. They push their hands and their bat path is going to move more in this direction. And the problem with this, you can see, is that they only have a small area to impact the baseball. Usually right about there. The really good hitters are guys that get in the zone way back here, and they stay in the zone way out here. The bigger we can make this area, well, the higher chances 
of actually making contact and driving the ball. Let me try this line one more time. Our swing isn't always going to be perfect timing wise. That's one thing that pitchers are taught. Pitching is all about disrupting rhythm and timing of the batter. Well, as a hitter, your timing is never going to be perfect. And to go with that, a pitch isn't a single point on this line. So that's one of the things when I hear a lot of younger coaches and players talking about swinging down because it's the shortest distance, uh, is a straight line, and guys want to swing as quickly as they can straight down, and it's an A to C swing. You hear all these things. Well, a pitch isn't a point. It's not, not every pitch is going to be at the exact same point on this line. A pitch is instead, it's basically, it could be here. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it's moving. So it's not just one point. So our goal, like I said, is to put ourselves on that line where the ball possibly could be so that, hey, if we're, if we're a little bit early, well, we'll be on the line a long time, we'll be able to hit it out here. If our timing's perfect, well, then we'll be able to hit it right here. If we're a little late, well, we still have a chance to hit it right here. We're giving ourselves chances and the more and more chances we can give ourselves along this line because we know our timing isn't going to be perfect every single time. Well, that's how you guys get, that's how the great hitters get high batting average. That's how they slug the ball so much. That's how they hit home runs. They're giving themselves more and more chances to intersect the pitch. Now, the last thing that we can look at, and you know, we could look at stuff all day long because Cano's swing is so fundamentally sound. But the last thing that we'll look at, because a lot of young kids... Um, I'm doing lessons all the time and working with younger players and a lot of kids have a tough time rotating, stiffening up the front side. But the one thing that you'll see, and, and a lot of young kids don't believe this happens, a lot of them have been taught to squish the bug. So their back foot basically just spins and their heel actually moves backwards and their weight kind of falls backwards into their back leg as they're swinging and they never get the weight off of their backside. If you watch Cano, and when I show a lot of kids this, nobody believes it. And a lot of parents don't believe it either. But if we just circle, if we just look at where his toe is. So he's rotating and his bat's about to come through the zone. And if we click it one more time as he's continuing to stiffen up his front side, now his toe's actually in the air off the ground. If I click it again, it's getting even higher in the air off the ground. If I click it again, now it's still off the ground. If I click it one more time and now it's coming back to the ground. So if you watch any high-level player, Cano does it great, you watch any successful big leaguer, their toe, their back foot actually gets off the ground, and that's because there's no weight on it. They've transferred their weight into their front side, and now they've stiffened up their front side, so they're actually blocking the weight. The weight's moving into this side, and they're getting up and off their back side. You know, one, one drill we'll do with younger kids is I'll actually draw a line and make them get over the line and make sure that they're weighted getting off of their backside when they rotate. And that's why Cano and these big league players can rotate so well is because they're getting the weight off their backside. If you don't get your weight off your backside, you can't rotate as well. The swing isn't going to work the way it needs to. And I think the, the real important thing to know and to think about is that all of this stuff has to happen at the right time, in the right sequence. You have to get your body in the right positions. So the reason he's able to rotate well and to get his weight off his backside is because he does other things in the swing as well. I've listed a couple of them, but that's why hitting is so hard is because you can't just pick out these things and, and try to pick your foot off the ground but doing it incorrectly. You need to be able to do all these things in step, in sequence, in order to make the whole sw swing flow, to really create that tension that we were talking about and then letting the rubber band go, releasing that tension to create all that power and that force. And that's why the swing is so complicated, it's so tough. That's why um, if you want to make adjustments and swing changes, it's not going to take one day. It's not going to take a week or even a month sometimes. Sometimes it's going to take longer. These guys have been doing it their whole lives, obviously, and they're still refining it and working on things every day. So it's important to find a knowledgeable coach and it's important to put in the work and make sure you're putting in the right work, but you got to put it in and don't expect things to get great after one session 
or even after 10 sessions. Sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, so those are some of the main things that I see. Obviously, we could go into a bunch of things. I think I'm out of time, actually. I think my video has to end in the next few seconds. So I'll just go over those few things. Uh, maybe in the future, we'll go over a couple of more. If you have any questions, let me know. I know that these topics that I talked about right now in 15, 20 minutes, uh, you know, if you're covering these in lessons or talking to players, you're going to go far more in depth. You're going to have hours and hours and hours to talk to them. I'm trying to hit on everything as fast as I can just to give you a quick idea. Obviously, I can't go into super detail. So if you have any more questions, you can email me, touchmoball at gmail.com, or you can send it into the comment section of YouTube. All right, guys, hope this helps you out a little bit, and uh, we'll talk to you later.